Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to WWE 2K22 Universe Mode Episode 5. This is Monday Night Raw. We're on the road to our first pay-per-view backlash, and tonight, the final two first-round matches in the number one contenders tournament for the WWE Championship will go down. In our main event, we will see a man full of retribution who is looking to get his career back on track. Mustafa Ali take on a decorated champion in his own right, the Messiah, Seth freaking Rollins. Plus, we will see the charismatic enigma himself, Jeff Hardy, do battle one-on-one -on -one with the archer, Damian Priest. That should be a certified banger. Two first-round matchups in the number one contenders tournament right here tonight on Monday Night Raw. Let's kick things off with a little bit of action. Here comes the Intercontinental Champion, King Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura with an upcoming Intercontinental Championship defense at Backlash. We're going to talk all about it throughout his matchup tonight. But as you can see, he's rocking that old school Intercontinental title tonight. What's well, old is new again here on our Universe Mode. This should be an awesome way to kick off tonight's Raw. Weighing in at 220 pounds, the WWE Intercontinental Champion, King Nakamura! Nakamura with an upcoming Intercontinental Championship defense against the number one contender, the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. Sheamus only needs the Intercontinental Championship to become a Grand Slam Champion in the WWE, the only title that's eluded him. That is going to be an awesome matchup in a couple of weeks' time at our first WWE 2K22 Universe Mode Pay-Per-View Backlash. Nakamura and Sheamus for the Intercontinental Championship on the way in a couple of weeks' time. But Nakamura here set for action to kick us off on Monday Night Raw. And he's going to take on the man that he defeated all the months back for the Intercontinental Championship in the first place. Former champion... Apollo Crews. I'm looking forward to this. This should be a great matchup to kick off what should be a very exciting Ladies night of action. From Greenway State, Nigeria, weighing in at 241 pounds, Apollo Crews. A rivalry renewed to kick us off on Monday Night Raw. Apollo Crews looking to get back in the winning ways in his own right tonight. A win against the Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nakamura. Definitely puts Apollo Crews' name in the hat as possible contenders for the IC Championship after Backlash. He gets him back in the win column, as we mentioned. Definitely building some momentum for either of these men. Either Apollo Crews, who could be looking to gain a future championship matchup, or Shinsuke Nakamura looking to gain momentum on the way to the Backlash pay-per-view with that huge defense coming up. But here we go. Let's kick off Monday Night Raw. Apollo Crews, one-on-one -on -one with the current reigning Intercontinental Champion, Shinsuke Nakamura. Here we go. Bell's about to sound weird to kick things off. Or not. Here comes the number one contender, Sheamus. The man who will face Nakamura Backlash. Looking to get a closer look at his opponent in a couple of weeks' time. Sheamus going to take a ringside seat, it appears, as he is here to scout the Intercontinental Champion. Things just got a little more interesting. As now, I believe, we're going to sound the bell for Apollo versus Nakamura right here on Raw. And there we go. Let's get things underway on a night that will host the final two first round matches in the number one contenders tournament. Last week, we saw AJ Styles defeating Ricochet, as well as Drew McIntyre defeating Cesaro. Now we have Mustafa Ali versus Seth Rollins, as well as Damian Priest versus Jeff Hardy tonight. And then next week on Raw, we will see the two semifinal matches in the number one contenders tournament. All to determine who fights Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship at Backlash. But as we mentioned, Nakamura, who a couple of weeks ago on Raw retained the Intercontinental Championship, and also awesome matchup against the Prince, Finn Balor, defends against the Celtic Warrior Sheamus, who earned that opportunity on main event a couple of weeks ago. By defeating Samoa Joe, which was a one-on-one -on -one collision course of a matchup, man. Go check it out. 
if you missed that one. Nakamura and Sheamus definitely going to be a heavy-hitting, hard-striking match for that IC Gold on pay-per-view in a couple of weeks. But as we mentioned, Apollo Crews, the man Nakamura originally defeated for that Intercontinental Championship all those months back. We've touched on Nakamura's long reign as champion here in recent memory, but Apollo Crews looking to get back in winning ways. We've seen him walk out of WrestleMania in the past as the Intercontinental Champion. Multiple time champion is Apollo Crews, United States Champion in his history as well. But it's been quite a minute since he's got a, a big time W. Has even been in the conversation for a championship opportunity. He's looking to close in on one here. Nice standing move, salt, and into a shooting star press, but Nakamura got the knees up. As we were mentioning, a win for Apollo Crews definitely got to put him in line for a future Intercontinental Championship matchup, and whether it's against Shinsuke Nakamura or Sheamus. It all depends on who walks out of the pay-per-view. Holding that IC gold as Apollo Crews showcasing his strength here. Just picks up Shinsuke Nakamura from the mat and slams him down below. As there you see, Sheamus right next to us here at ringside. He's scouting the Intercontinental Champion. He's got to be aware of moves like that. That could be the KO blow when these two meet in a few weeks. Nakamura takes down Apollo Crews. Working over Apollo Crews right now. That's kick to the back of the head. Drop kick. Nakamura looking to build momentum for the pay-per-view. As we mentioned, he beat Finn Balor a couple of weeks ago. A win over Apollo Crews here. Oh, wait a minute. Nakamura. Sheamus is mouthing off to the champion. Nakamura, I think, has had enough of it. We're going face-to-face -face now. Things might be coming to blows a couple of weeks early, but we'll watch Apollo Crews. Takes out Nakamura from behind. Apollo Crews took advantage of the distraction from the Celtic Warrior and lays out Nakamura, and I believe the referee has thrown Sheamus out of this matchup. Sheamus came to get a closer look at Nakamura. The two got in a little bit of an altercation there moments ago. Apollo Crews taking advantage. With that distraction, the referee deciding to throw the number one contender out of here. But the main story that we need to focus on is Apollo Crews is now in firm control over the Intercontinental Champion. Because he's got the submission hold in at ringside. Can he beat Nakamura at ringside? No, but he definitely can inflict a whole lot of damage. If Apollo Crews picks up a win in these next few moments, he may have to just thank Sheamus for that. Sheamus looking to just completely take the momentum out of Nakamura's corner on the road to Backlash. As Nakamura gets back in the ring, he's looking to resettle. After he just went face to face with the, the man he'll face on pay-per-view for the first time. Sheamus. Nice knee down there to Apollo Crews. As Nakamura looking to get back into things here. He knows Apollo Crews got a real good advantage there. And really could have capitalized. Nakamura trying to... Definitely make sure he stays on the offense here. Look at this. Flurries of kicks. We've seen Nakamura go to the well many times in this matchup with those kicks. He's striking on Apollo Crews' chest. And one of the head for good measures. That could be all, but looks like Nakamura isn't done yet. He's going to the second rope. What in the name could Nakamura possibly be thinking about? It looks like he neglects against it. That may be. Oh, Apollo Crews. Battle back and forth here. Here we go. Here we go. Apollo Crews not looking to give an inch. He wants that win over the current champion, man. These guys, like we mentioned, they got history with each other. Apollo Crews wants the Intercontinental Championship, and Nakamura takes down Crews. All about building momentum for Shinsuke Nakamura. So Apollo Crews is down now. Nakamura going into the well with those kicks, as we mentioned. Still to come tonight on Raw, ladies and gentlemen. Damian Priest takes on Jeff Hardy. That'll be up after this. And that first round matchup of the number one contenders tournament, and then our main event later tonight. Nakamura, a nice kick. Our main event later tonight, Mustafa Ali takes on Seth Rollins, which I'm sure is going to be an exciting contest inside the squared circle. Nakamura again takes down Apollo Crews. Nakamura's really started to pull the momentum into his corner. As he's scouting Crews, Nakamura, knee to the face! Knee to face delivers! You could probably count to 20. Cruz gets KO'd by the Intercontinental Champion. And even through the distraction from Sheamus earlier on, Shinsuke Nakamura with that move right there 
That Kinshasa right to the knee. Variation. Knee to the face of Apollo Crews is all she wrote. Regardless of the altercation, Shinsuke Nakamura stands atop and builds momentum towards backlash in a couple of weeks' time. Let's keep things going with the action right here on Monday Night Raw. It is number one contenders tournament time. First round, Jeff Hardy versus Damian Priest. I'm pumped up for this one. Jeff Hardy looking to great gain a championship he hasn't held in many, many years. The WWE Championship at Backlash. Just imagine. Just imagine. This is going to be a good one. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Cameron, North Carolina. Weighing in at 225 pounds. Jeff The last time Jeff Hardy held World Championship gold was in 2009. He won the World Heavyweight Championship on two occasions. Before that was the WWE Championship, which he held on one occasion. He won that title back in December, Armageddon 2008 to be exact. He held it for about just over a month. Jeff Hardy has had a decorated career in the WWE. Plenty of tag team championship runs, United States Intercontinental Hardcore European, you name it, Jeff Hardy has probably held it. As we've mentioned, it's been quite some time since Jeff Hardy was at the top of the mountain here in the WWE. A win tonight progresses him along in the tournament, and just imagine if Jeff Hardy can win the whole thing and go on to uncrown the almighty Bobby Lashley on pay-per-view, just what that would do for Jeff Hardy's career in this stage. But he's got a tough task ahead of him as Damian Priest makes his way to the ring. And we're gonna to touch on Damian Priest and his career in just a moment. And his opponent from New York, New York, weighing in at 249 pounds, Damian Priest. Let's take a look at the updated bracket as of right now. Last week, AJ Styles defeated Ricochet. Drew McIntyre defeated Cesaro. Now we move on to the final two first round matches and Bobby Lashley awaits the winner at the Backlash pay-per-view. Damian Priest, a former NXT North American champion, a former WWE United States champion. No stranger to championship gold, even in his young WWE career, he is a veteran of this business. Damian Priest and Jeff Hardy have faced off in singles action before. Damian Priest has come out on top, but what will be the result here? Will it be Priest or will it be Hardy? Moving on to fight AJ Styles in the semifinals of the tournament next week. Here we go as Jeff Hardy comes out on the offense early. No collar and elbow here. These guys are gonna go at it. And they're gonna go at it hard. It's all to become the WWE Champion possibly at the end of this tournament. This Priest now sends Jeff into the ropes. Look at this, just outmaneuvers. Jeff Hardy, clothesline, sends Jeff Hardy in and out. That's a heavy move from Damian Priest early, and he follows it up with a kick. Like I said, no collar and elbow here, man. These guys are going right at it. Everybody wants to move on, especially these semifinal matches tonight. AJ Styles and Drew McIntyre, they won their first round matches last week, giving them two weeks to rest before the semifinals, which will take place next week on Raw. As for whoever wins these matches tonight, Damian Priest, Jeff Hardy, Mustafa Ali, Seth Rollins, Two of those four men will move on to next week, but that's going to be only one week time of rest compared to their opponents too. Will that play a factor? And I think you got to imagine it would, so I think it would be in everybody's best bet tonight to try to finish out these first round matches as early as possible, but of course that is easier said than done, especially when you're in there with the caliber of these talents. Jeff Hardy, former World Heavyweight Champion, Damian Priest, an in-ring veteran as well. Two very tough men, and they have proven their worth here in the WWE. This will be no easy task for either of them. And the same goes for Mustafa Ali and Seth Rollins, who we will see inside the Spirit Circle. In our main event tonight, Jeff goes for the splash, but Damian Priest gets out of the way. These guys are not going to give an inch here. They have been throwing everything they've got at each other since the opening bell. Priest takes Hardy to the outside. This could be a good moment to catch his breath here. He looks like he's going to go after 
the charismatic enigma. Jeff Hardy just outmaneuvers him though and gets back in the ring. Nice, nice kick. Like we mentioned, the winner of this, and you guys saw the bracket. We'll face AJ Styles in the semifinals. AJ defeated Ricochet last week. As Jeff into the cover of the Priest gets his shoulder up. It was a very exciting matchup last week. Both first round matchups. AJ Styles with the winner over Ricochet, McIntyre, and Cesaro. Just beating the hell out of each other in last week's main event. Drew McIntyre with a big Claymore moving past Cesaro. And those men get this extra week to rest. On the road to backlash, Jeff Hardy, big DDT. That could play dividends later, kind of working on the head and neck area early. Imagine if Jeff adds a twist to Fainter there. That's going to do a lot of damage as Damian Priest miscalculates that crossbody as Jeff Hardy sidestepped him. And now Jeff back in control. Jeff usually known for his high risk, high reward in ring style in that ring, but he's got some strength to him as well as he just showcased over the archer himself. Nice kick. Hardy. Look at that. We talked about the high flying and Jeff Hardy does just that. Goes for the moonsault, but Damian Priest gets out of the way. Damian Priest here. He's got Jeff. He's looking for that razor's edge. And down goes Jeff Hardy. One of Damian Priest's signature maneuvers. Drops the elbow on Jeff. We got a collar and elbow late here. Damian Priest sends Jeff Hardy over the top rope. Damian Priest gaining control over the charismatic enigma. We talked about Jeff Hardy's accolades. We talked about Damian Priest's accolades. But just imagine what it would mean for both of these men's career to dethrone the man who has been sitting atop and dominating this brand for quite some time, that being Bobby Lashley. We've talked about it in recent weeks. In our canon universe mode, Bobby Lashley defeated Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania to retain the WWE Championship, closing out their history. Now Bobby Lashley is looking for the next challenger in his dominant almighty reign as champion, which is why this eight-man showcase tournament has been assembled to assure that the next man in line will definitely be deserving and definitely be able to put on a fight and give Bobby Lashley some true competition. When Bobby Lashley and the winner of this tournament meet in the main event of Backlash on pay-per-view. Jeff Hardy's down. Damian Priest could be looking for some high-risk maneuvers as well. But Jeff Hardy, look at that. Damian Priest has miscalculated a couple of high-risk maneuvers here. And I don't know why he's going for so many. Not something that is unusual for Priest, but definitely not his strong suit, especially against Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy knows those moves like the back of his hand. He certainly knows how to reverse them as well. And oh, just get out of the way in time. Priest is going for a couple of... The High flying maneuvers, but Jeff Hardy has just been able to sidestep all of them. As Jeff sends Damian Priest into the corner. Priest is in this predicament because of a, a failed high risk maneuver, but hell, that's why they call it high risk. And Jeff goes for a springboard himself, but Priest now miscalculates it. These guys have got to watch those high risk maneuvers, man. They can pay dividends, but they can also put you in a rut in a matchup. Nice chop. Things are just starting to get a little bit brutal here. We go from the chops and some right hands to Damian Priest delivering the elbow to Jeff Hardy. Nice kick. And now he's got a, he a suplex here. No, sits out with it. Jeff Hardy down and out. Jeff Hardy could be in trouble. His hopes of possibly winning the WWE Championship are fading here. Damian Priest hit the lights. Down goes Jeff. Priest with the hits, the lights. Cover. It's over. Damian Priest moving on to the semifinals of the number one contenders tournament. Exciting matchup, man. Both guys throwing caution in the wind on multiple occasions. In the end, it was Damian Priest. High impact maneuver there. Hit the lights. Priest punches his ticket to the semifinals. Damian Priest, AJ Styles, book it for next week on Raw. We got a couple of other matches here tonight on Raw. Drew Gulak versus Isaiah Swerve Scott, the winner. We'll move on to the Cruiserweight Championship match at Backlash. Liv Morgan versus Sasha Banks. Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch 
versus the World Tag Team Champions Eric and Ivar. We got some news on them coming up in just a moment. And then, of course, in our main event, Mustafa Ali takes on Seth Rollins in the number one contenders tournament. Let's see who picked up the win in a couple of these matches. Isaiah Swerve Scott's moving on the backlash for the Cruiserweight Championship. That should be a great addition to that matchup. As we see now, five men have entered one more spot in the Cruiserweight title matchup for the vacant championship. Should be great. Sasha Banks defeats Liv Morgan in a one-on-one -on -one contest. And next up on Raw, it's going to be the Viking Raiders versus Birch and Lorcan. But we have breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. In a rematch from a couple of weeks ago on Raw, RK Bro looking to get their World Tag Team titles back against the Viking Raiders. It's going to be a rematch at Backlash. We actually have this Raw report coming in from Randy Orton. Viking Raiders, a few weeks ago you ended our near 10-month reign as World Tag Team Champions. Congrats. Don't get too comfortable. We are invoking our rematch clause at Backlash. RK Bro will be taking the gold back. We held so proudly, and I personally promise it's only going to take one RKO. Randy Orton and Matt Riddle invoking their rematch clause from a couple of weeks ago. They lost the World Tag Team Championships to Eric and Ivar, which those two got their hands full right now. It's a tag team match scheduled for one fall on the way to the ring at a combined weight of 380 pounds. Danny Birch and Oni Lorcan. Now, of course, this is a non-title match, but the reason Birch and Lorcan getting this opportunity against the Viking Raiders tonight is if you remember a couple of weeks ago on main event, these guys picked up a victory over Lucha House Party, hence the reason they're getting a shot in the ring tonight against Eric and Ivar in non-title action. But here come the men that de dethroned RK Bro for the World Tag Team Championships a couple of weeks ago. Eric! Ivar, the Viking Raiders. These guys are a scary duo. And their opponents at a combined weight of 552 pounds. The World Tag Team Champions, Eric and Ivar, the Viking. So as we mentioned, we now know the rematch is on. Viking Raiders put the titles up against the men they defeated for those World Tag Team Championships back on Raw two weeks ago. Randy Orton and Matt Riddle, RK Bro, in a rematch on pay-per-view at Backlash. It was a hell of a main event. The two teams fought tooth and nail for those World Tag Team Championships a couple of weeks back. Now it's time to run it back at the Backlash event. I cannot wait to see those two teams tangle again once more for those World Tag Team Championships. But as for the Viking Raiders, they cannot look past their opponents here tonight. Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan, two tough SOBs if I ever saw them. And as we mentioned, they ain't in the ring with the champions for no reason. A couple of weeks ago, they picked up a huge victory over Lince Dorado and Kalisto, Lucha House Party on main event. Birch and Lorcan look great in that matchup. And as we mentioned, they got the victory. Tonight they go one-on-one -on -one with the Viking Raiders. And it's a big opportunity for them. Because if they defeat the Viking Raiders, well then you got to imagine Birch and Lorcan are in line for a championship matchup after Backlash. No matter if the champions are Viking Raiders or RK Bro. So Lork, Lorcan and Birch definitely going to be looking to pick up a W as always here tonight. This is our first look at the Viking Raiders since winning the World Tag Team Championship. They are a top of our great tag team division here in the WWE as of right now. But you know what they say, man. It's harder to get to the top, or should I say it's harder to stay at the top than it is to get to the top. These championships mean one thing for the Viking Raiders, and that is a target on the back of Eric and Ivar. So just like teams like Birch and Lorcan, RK Bro now coming back for the titles, things are only going get, to get, gonna get harder and not easier for Eric and Ivar as the world tag team champions. Ivar in there with Danny Burch now as we get into some of the in-ring action. This will be our final in-ring contest before we get to our main event. Just after this, Mustafa Ali and Seth Rollins. We've talked a ton about the number one contenders tournament here tonight on Raw. It continues up next in our main event. A lot of big news on Backlash just coming out of some results moments ago. Isaiah Swerve Scott, the fifth man to punch his ticket in the six-pack challenge for the vacant Cruiserweight Championship at Backlash. Only one more spot remains in that matchup. 
We have Rey Mysterio, Santos Escobar, Mansoor, Graham Metalik, and Isaiah Swerve Scott. Who will be the sixth man to compete for the Cruiserweight title at the pay-per-view? We are going to find that out very, very soon on the way to Backlash. And of course, Viking Raiders, RK Bro, the World Tag Team title is going to be on the line. Nakamura and Sheamus, the Intercontinental Championship. We're going to have news on the roll. Or should, should say the WWE Women's Champion, Bianca Belair, and who her opponent will be coming up in a couple of weeks' time. Backlash is shaping up to be an exciting event. All the championships will be on the line and other matches as well. Stay tuned here on the channel as we will be announcing the pay per view card over the next couple of weeks. Ivar in there with Danny Burch, Viking Raiders looking to build some momentum towards that tangle with Orton and Riddle. We got a tag made to Eric. Danny Burch crawling to his corner. And a tag made to Oni Lorkin. Two fresh men in here. And these things are just going to go from bad to worse for both these teams. These guys are going to keep throwing heavy hitters. Big time elbow and a big time four. Ooh, I think I'm going to cut Oni Lorkin. That was bare bone elbow right over the eye. And yeah, you see it right there. Oni Lorkin just got busted open real easy. But I mean, that's, that's very thin tissue there. Just got cut right above the eye. Only Lorcan gets in here and he immediately gets busted. That was a hard elbow from Eric. But you know what they say, man. This ain't ballet. This is professional wrestling. And when the World Tag Team Championships, or I should say the World Tag Team Champions are in the ring and you got a chance to prove yourselves against the champions, yeah, a little blood ain't going to slow you down. Only Lorcan, he's tough. So is Danny Burch. So is the Viking Raiders. So we know these guys will stop and nothing to get a win. There's only Lorcan Scout and Eric here. Let's see what he's got in mind. Running blockbuster. That's a signature, signature maneuver for Oni Lorcan. Well, I believe he's going to go for the cover, but Eric getting that, hit, getting that kick to the head. And you know, we said mentally, well, the blood ain't going to slow you down, but physically, that may be something that Oni Lorcan, that's going to take a toll on him the longer this match progresses, as there's a big time double team maneuver from the Viking Raiders. It's moves like that that awarded them the victory against RK Bro a couple of weeks ago. I've already a legal man now, and he is just oh, hammering away on Oni Lorcan. The Viking Raiders may be some of our fan favorites here, but they are not afraid to get their hands dirty inside the squared circle. Ivar drops the big leg on Oni Lorcan. Oh, but Oni Lorcan's cut is getting worse. He is bleeding profusely from over the eye. And a kick like that is not going to help. My God. Viking Raiders having their way with Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch. They're looking to send a message to Matt Riddle and Randy Orton. I mean, Matt Riddle, in our last episode of Main Event, he gained a little momentum for RK. Bro, and there's a blockbuster once again from Oni Lorcan. Danny Burch in, Eric in. The fresh men from both teams. Both missing for shots there, but there's Danny Burch with the left hand. As we mentioned in the latest episode of Main Event, it was Matt Riddle defeating Chad Gable in the Main Event, building a little bit more momentum for RK Bro, getting a W back in their win column. Oh, and a big knee by Eric. He's not careful. He might bust open Danny Burch too. It ain't the intention, but it comes along with the territory. Big time counter, look at that hip toss. That was just beautiful professional wrestling counter. And one of the in-ring best here on Monday Night Raw, Danny Burch. Very underrated is Burch and Lorcan. A great tag team. They're looking to punch their ticket for a future World Tag Team Championship matchup. Like we mentioned, a win over the Viking Raiders here. Definitely has to put them in line as the top contenders after Backlash. And we'll see the Viking Raiders versus RK Bro. And whether it's Eric and Ivar, holding the World Tag Team Gold, or whether it's Randy Orton and Matt Riddle atop the Tag Team Division again. A win for Burch and Lorcan here. Puts them first up as Ivar from the top rope. That could be it, Viking Raiders. I was about to say call it a day, but I saw Danny Burch out of the corner of my eye, man. That is usually a finishing maneuver for Eric and Ivar, but Danny Burch is right there to break it up. There's the leg drop from Ivar, and that's going to do it. Viking Raiders into the cover. Se no! I was about to say send it home, but Oni Lorcan. Man, this guy is tough. 
I mean, I'm not surprised. I said it myself, but geez, who can withstand this punishment, especially when you're busted wide open like that? Only Lorcan again hits that neckbreaker blockbuster. He's looking to do some damage with those maneuvers in this matchup. The blockbuster, the uppercuts, the heft, the heft Nelson German, some of Ernie Lorcan's best moves, and we've seen him pull out all the stops so far. He tags in Danny Birch. Birch goes right to the top rope. He's scouting eye for a beautiful missile drop kick. Man, this thing is picking up. It's been great since the get-go, but you see the little bit of sense of urgency here, especially with a bloody man on the challenger side. Especially Viking Raiders, man. I would hate to suffer a loss if I'm them two after coming off such a big win. And wait a minute, Danny Birch, Tower of London. And if he, if he wasn't in the Viking Raiders corner, I think that might have done it. But Danny Birch, he's a veteran of the ring, but really not paying attention to his in-ring in -ring awareness there. I think that may have done it, as we've now spilled, spilled out to a brawl with Eric and Odie Lorcan on the outside. Ivar looking to put Danny Birch away, but he gets the shoulder up. The referee is to gain control. Birch and Lorcan, we've seen them brawl in the past. A big brawl broke out at ringside between Oni Lorcan and a member of Lucha House Party during that match. It was actually Danny Birch who got the pin there with a big time lariat. As he's got the big man Ivar on top, he's going for it again. Tower of London making a dose. Danny Lorcan into the cover. He got him. Danny Birch and Oni Lorcan just upset the World Tag Team Champions. I'm not shocked by the victory, by who got the victory. But I am shocked to see the Viking Raiders go down here tonight. That is a here huge win. Are your winners, Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. Birch and Lorcan absolutely just put themselves at the front of the line post backlash. No matter if it's the Viking Raiders who they just proved they can beat or RK Bro, Birch and Lorcan are coming for the world tag team titles. Great matchup and a big time win for these two tough SOBs. Well, coming up on Universe Mode Episode 6, it's WWE Main Event, and the road to Backlash continues as number one contender Sheamus teams up with friend Jinder Mahal to take on Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nakamura and Finn Balor. But also on that night, it is going to be the rematch. Bianca Belair versus Shotzi. And if Shotzi wins this matchup and add an incentive, she will earn a women's championship match directly against Bianca Belair. Those two running it back after they had a classic matchup on Raw last week. That's going to be on your next episode of Main Event. An already stacked lineup for that show. As we get set for our Main Event, the number one contenders tournament, the final first round matchup, Mustafa Ali versus Seth freaking Rollins. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Chicago, Illinois. Weighing in at 182 pounds. Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali, a guy who you could say has definitely ruffled some feathers over the last few years. The former leader of the ex-group known as Retribution Mustafa Ali has been disgruntled for a while, but he's looking to refocus back in his singles ways all by himself and looking to get his career back on track. He's been given an opportunity in this number one contenders tournament. It is no tough, or I should say, it is no easy task for Mustafa Ali in the first round as he has a decorated champion to fight in the, mon in the Monday night. Messiah himself, Seth freaking Rollins. And of course, Seth Rollins will have Murphy in his corner, so Mustafa Ali going to have to keep an eye out on his old rival Murphy. But nonetheless, it's a great opportunity for a guy who hasn't been given a lot of opportunities in Mustafa Ali. But here comes his opponent. Embrace the vision of Seth freaking Rollins. And his opponent, accompanied by Murphy from Davenport, Iowa, weighing in at 217 pounds, Seth Rollins! Seth Rollins, it's been quite some time as well since he has been on top of the mountain here in WWE. 2019 was the last time we saw Seth Rollins holding World Championship gold. 
He has taken on a new leash on life since then. The Messiah of WWE is Seth Rollins, and he is looking to pick up a victory. And wait a minute, Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali's egging Seth Rollins to get back into the ring early. And Mustafa Ali coming out hot. He challenged Seth Rollins to get in the ring. He wasn't waiting for the bell. Mustafa Ali may have bit off more than he can chew, though, as Seth Rollins taking advantage. But there's Mustafa Ali. Seth Rollins hasn't even gotten his jacket off yet, but the bell has sounded, ladies and gentlemen. The final match in the first round is underway. Crossbody by Mustafa Ali. He's going for the early cover. Mustafa wants the biggest win of his career thus far, but Rollins gets the shoulder up. Oh, this is going to be good, man. Let's set the stage real quick as Mustafa Ali rushed towards the bell. He did not want to wait for Seth Rollins to get set in the ring. We got to watch out for Murphy at ringside in Seth Rollins' corner. A man who picked up a win over Rey Mysterio a couple of weeks ago. But tonight it's Mustafa Ali, one-on-one -on -one with the Monday Night Messiah, Seth freaking Rollins. This is the final first round matchup in the number one contenders tournament as Mustafa Ali clotheslines Rollins over the top. He's going corkscrew, but Seth Rollins got out of the way. Mustafa, slow down, kid. You may just be a little overzealous. I get when they get your career back on track. Mustafa Ali's been itching for opportunity for quite some time, but you don't want to be too eager and cost yourself an opportunity here. Eager from the get-go, Mustafa Ali rushed towards Seth Rollins, challenged Rollins to get in the ring. Rollins obliged. We got this, the sound of the bell. Now these two are just going at it ever since we heard that bell go off. Both these men back in the ring at the count of seven. Definitely don't want to see a double count out here. If that were to happen, we would see a draw for this matchup, and that would mean Drew McIntyre gets a clear-cut ticket to the finals. But even Drew McIntyre, I'm sure, doesn't want that. He wants to earn his opportunity in his own way and in the toughest way possible, and that would be to either fight Mustafa Ali or Seth Rollins. And as the looks of it right now, Seth Rollins is in firm control after that frog splash. And again, Murphy at ringside. Mustafa Ali going to have to keep his eye on his old rival from 205 Live days, Mustafa and Murphy. These two have had some classic battles in the past. Mustafa Ali back in control here. Seth Rollins down and out. Look at this beautiful drop kick by Mustafa Ali. We've seen a flurry of offense from Ali throughout this contest thus far. He is really just throwing all ends at Rollins, but there's Rollins, man. You can't count this man out. Super kick. Rollins comes. There's a big knee. And I really think Rollins keeps getting control of this matchup, and I think it's due to Ali's just overzealousness here. Just absolutely rushing, maybe a little bit too fast. Needs to slow down. And try to just compose himself against Seth Rollins here. Rollins clearly the more methodical and patient of these two. Can't say some of Mustafa's offense isn't connecting, but it's also what's costing him. But there you go, Mustafa Ali unleashes a flurry of offense. As Rollins is down and out, Mustafa could be looking for a big time win. Hits the splash into the cover. One. Caught. No, not even a two. Not even a two just yet. Mustafa shocked by that. After hitting a couple consecutive offensive maneuvers, but Seth Rollins is no lightweight, man. He's been around the block nearly 10 years. Nearly a decade for Seth Rollins here in the WWE. And how many championships has he held since then? Tag Team Gold, Intercontinental Championship, the WWE Championship. He's a former Mr. Money in the Bank, Royal Rumble winner. WrestleMania moments for Seth Rollins. He's an absolutely decorated superstar. Here in the WWE, Mustafa Ali on the other hand, definitely looking to just make it, make some waves, man. He's a very just was I should say a very disgruntled superstar as we mentioned the last few years. The former leader of Retribution, now that that group has fuzzled out, Mustafa Ali is back on his own and has complained at least in the past about lack of opportunity. Now trying to change his ways, he just wants to focus on himself, refocus on the ring, and get back to what he was doing before everything, at least in his words, went downhill. He stopped into the cover again on Seth Rollins, but Rollins again gets the shoulder up a two. It's been a hell of a main event this far. What a great night on Rollins. Mustafa again off the cover. Rollins kicks out again. Mustafa needs to slow down. Slow down. 
You're not going to put Seth Rollins away that early. As we mentioned, what a great night it has been here tonight. Damian Priest picking up the win over Jeff Hardy. He will move on to the semifinals next week to challenge AJ Styles. Of course, the winner of this challenge is Drew McIntyre next week, right here on Raw. Moments ago, we saw Danny Burch and Randy Lorcan knock off the Viking Raiders. Huge upset over the World Tag Team Champions. Definitely going to put them in line for a future title opportunity after Backlash. And Seth Rollins looking to scout Murphy here. Curb stomp! Curb stomp! Pack it up, send it home. Seth Rollins is going to the semifinals, no doubt about it. No way. Whoa! 2.9. Mustafa Ali gets the shoulder up. He kicked out of the damn curb stomp. Rollins. V Trevor. But somehow Mustafa Ali. The fight. The old heart and the soul of Mustafa Ali. Excuse me, that wasn't a V-trigger a moment ago by Seth Rollins. This is what is a ripcord knee, I believe. So much just happened there. Mustafa Ali was standing a flurry of offense, but man, you'll you'll fight through that pain when you got an opportunity like this. Curb stomp, ripcord knee, Mustafa Ali still standing. Face plants Rollins into a submission hold. Mustafa looking to tap out tap out Seth. Is this gonna do it? Rollins is struggling. Mustafa Ali looking to tap out Seth Rollins. As the pinfalls haven't gone his way, that's yet, but Rollins gets out of it. Mustafa Ali put that Koji clutch in on Seth Rollins. It was not enough. Mustafa's pulling out all the stops here, man. He wants this win, man. He wants this win more than anything. Rollins back and forth here. Rollins counters. Mustafa Ali counters down goes Seth. What a main event this has been. Rollins the counter again. Back and forth we go. Teeter totter into who's going to see. To see who, excuse me, is going to move on to the semifinals. Look at this. Mustafa. No, nope, on the shoulders of Seth Rollins countered. And that might just spell the end for Mustafa. Absolutely halting his momentum. Kick. No. Nope. Another counter. These guys with the reversals, man. As Rollins rolled out of it when Mustafa Ali catches him with the insiguri. And here's Ali, the old heart and soul going to the top. What's he going here? Here, 450, but Rollins got the knees up. Rollins got the knees up. How in the hell? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mustafa fights through the pain again. With that, oh, Rollins catches a power bomb. Another reversal. Frankensteiner, cover. Oh, so close, so close. Rollins gets the shoulder up. These guys are going super at each other, man. Super style. Ali goes down. Koji clutching again on Seth Rollins. He's looking to tap out Seth. Will Mustafa move on? He does. Seth Rollins taps. Seth Rollins taps. Mustafa Ali just upsets Seth Rollins. Mustafa Ali is punching his ticket to the semifinals. There you see the updated bracket. Ali will meet Drew McIntyre. I cannot believe the punishment he withstand in this matchup. Somehow, someway, Ali fights back through the curb stomp, through the ripped cord knee, through all the counters, through this. Watch this, 450, knees up, but Mustafa Ali just fought out of it. Countered into this into the Frankenstein. It wasn't enough, it was the Koji Crush that did it. That is an impressive victory if I ever saw one. Mustafa Ali back in the winning ways, upsets Seth Rollins, and he's got himself a date with Drew McIntyre next week. That's going to be a huge challenge. Can't wait for Raw next week as the number one contenders tournament to backlash rolls on. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you on WWE Main Event. See you next time.